We specialize in the practice of casting out demons. Witchcraft spells, they got a witch broom. Ah! What is this, Baphomet? These are demons. I'll just draw a pentagram on the ground and, you know, ask Satan to end this right now. What happens when a mom who is a pastor at her local church that literally spends her free time expelling demons from people has to switch lives with a family of warlocks and witches? Well, it's absolutely off the charts, hilarious, and unhinged, I'll tell you that much. We're about to get right on into it with this episode of Wife Swap that I cannot believe exists, but before we do that, make sure you smash that like button within the next two seconds or else this lady might be showing up to your house trying to expel a demon out of you. Good luck with that if you were too late. <laughs> but without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? We specialize in deliverance ministry, the practice of casting out devils demons. That's right. This lady is one of those people you've probably seen in YouTube compilations where an entire church full of people is losing their minds as a demon is being, quote, expelled from this person. It's straight out of a horror movie, but I think it's supposed to be uplifting. I'm still quite confused on that. Either way, that's what this lady does by trade, and my God, is she a pro at it. Sometimes I feel guilty because I'm also like a spiritual mother to a multitude of people. And she literally calls the people who come to her sermons her children, and she fears that she has been spending way too much time and emotion on these people instead of her actual family. Now, her family situation isn't the one we're talking about. It's the people you're about to meet who are literally the embodiment of Discord mods. I mean, no joke. You're going to see a cattail, some cat ears, and fedoras in mass. So be warned. Every poem that I write is basically a spell. So I write all of my own spells and incantations myself. So she writes poems, aka spells, and these incantations do things for her. They spawn, I don't know, little demon warlocks. I really don't know how this works. It sounds like a freaking game like Diablo or something. But yeah, she just writes a little poem, maybe a little haiku about whoever pissed her off, and something bad happens to them. Quite scary if that's real, if you ask me. I mean, I'm shivering in my tempers over here. You heard that voice crack. If I am angry and I write a poem about it, I feel bad for that person because the universe is just going to be like, oh, Monica's mad. Honestly, how cocky are you to think that the universe just listens to you? But also at the same time, this lady's like, yeah, anybody who pisses me off, the universe just listens to me and attacks them. Like, what the hell is up with that? That sounds a little bit archaic, doesn't it? I wrote a poem about somebody who was being a towards me that person ended up in the hospital and then in jail what a crazy insane correlation i'm already getting kind of bad vibes but you know try not to judge either way it sounds like this lady has a lot of power so i'm sure her husband's the same who like i said earlier seems to be a physical embodiment of the term reddit mod then i create a positive entity to go out and do my bidding if it's a negative thing then well the destruction begins. I mean, that is just the voice and the inner monologue of someone who has way too much freaking karma. Am I right? Karma being internet points on Reddit for those who are uninitiated. This dude definitely has said, thanks for the gold, kind stranger, in a comment before in his lifetime. But he also can spawn demons to do his bidding, so let's hope this pastor lady does not piss them off, or we might see a little demon battle. Oh lord, a skull head? It looked like an altar. Ah! What is this, Baphomet? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is absolutely brilliant. Baphomet again? They nasty. This stuff will blow your whole wig off. That needs to be a TikTok sound. How is that not a TikTok sound? What the hell is that, Baphomet? What a wild way to pronounce that demon's name. But yeah, needless to say, these people are a little bit on the nose with their uh, worship of these deities. I mean, they also definitely shop at Hot Topic and online. They're buying out every single drop that Black Craft Cult does. These are demons. What are these, witches? Yes, and warlocks, actually. Great guess. She picked up on the witch vibes right away, and she freaks out when she sees that they have an actual witch broom, which is just so hilarious to me. Like, these people are totally cosplaying this whole lifestyle, and it's just giving me straight-up theater kid vibes. In the name of Jesus, I, cup, I put on right now the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Damn, she's using, like, forward slash kit God in Minecraft, if anybody's used that before. She's spawning in, like, enchanted netherite armor. I don't know. I, it sounded like something like that. Whatever it is, she's stacked, though. Also, how badass. You reach a certain level of spirituality and you can just spawn in armor like that. I'm low-key jealous. Hey. Hi. So the family walks in and she meets them looking very standoffish. She is honestly scared at this point of these people thinking they are all demons hiding in human skin. And the dad walks in with no lie, a fedora. I called it, guys. We need to find out what subreddits exactly that he moderates, but I know there are some dorky-ass ones at that. Yeah, your house is different. Did you call yourself a warlock? That's just another name for what I do. 
Yeah, it's another name for what he does. You know the other name actually? Demonologist. That's right. This dude introduced himself earlier as an expert of demonology, which is so crazy. It reminds me of those Dragonology books that I used to buy at the Scholastic Book Fair. Man, I was freaking addicted to those. If anybody is a boomer like me and is around my age range, you know what I'm talking about. All right, those books were the sh They had like the little dragon scale samples you could feel. Oh, it was insane. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. This dude kept reading those books into adulthood and then took it as his own religion. Yes to project a demon to do whatever you want. In my faith, any witchcraft is considered evil. And these people just straight up control demon armies in their brain. Like how delusional do you have to be? At the same time, it sounds like straight up a movie script, but literally everyone in this show so far has been living in fantasy land. A badass fantasy land, but a fantasy one at that. That's a no-go. Wait, so, excuse me, I didn't, uh, hey, Bassie, well, I, I listened to you, and so... I'm still talking. I'm, I stayed at my beliefs. Like, and immediately, shocker, actually shocking to nobody, they start fighting. <laughs> because you got two people of directly opposing ideologies here who almost have a fear of each other. So they're bound to be fighting, and yeah, this dude is really pushing back on the idea of this woman, like, wanting him to pray or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> this whole situation is hilarious to me. This is a great episode so far. So anyways, directly after they bring out these pieces of paper where they're supposed to write something they want to get rid of or, you know, speak out of existence within themselves, like an emotion, for example, and they throw it into a fire, and that's like their way of dispelling bad energy, whatever it might be. And coming again is a shock to nobody, this pastor decides not to, because that pretty much directly goes against what she teaches, or at least what she thinks is okay to do. I was concerned, again, about the children, demonic torment happening to the children, and I believe it's as a result of this witchcraft. And she is really not liking the idea that these kids are saying, like, I want to get rid of my anxiety and throwing a little paper into a fire. Again, if anything, it just comes down to feeling like straight up dorky cosplay. But at the same time, she probably sees fire and just immediately associates it with demons once again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laughing because these people truly are probably in distress being around each other, but it's making for such perfect TV. Please. So you're going to read two of the, the poems out of her book. Do you have vampire teeth thing right yes, now? Yes, I do. Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so in what also looks like a Portlandia skit, this dude is pulling up to a goth coffee brunch thing where his original wife was supposed to read a piece of her poetry titled after, again, a doom game or something. And something's telling me this lady is not going to decide to read this poem when she's brought up to read it. I also love that this dude is walking around with vampire teeth. It just hurts. Like, this dude is dressing up like it's Halloween every single day, and I kind of respect him for that. Like, he's really going by his own beat. The blood that Jesus shed. <laughs> so she says, you know what? Screw this book. I'm going to sing for y'all. It just starts to sing about the blood of Jesus kind of turning this evil, evil goth coffee scenario into something positive where she can preach her beliefs at people. That's pretty much directly going against the rules of the show. But, you know, we've come to expect that at this point. Not many people play by the rules, especially when it comes to their beliefs. That was totally hijacking on this time. And he leans over and, uh, you know, very cautiously voices his concerns and his anger at her because, yeah, this pissed this dude off. That was supposed to be his wife's poetry, you know, display and for her to show off her book that she wrote full of her spells about people that pissed her off and cut her off in traffic, etc. And it was bastardized by this amazing gospel singing. How dare she? You know, there's one thing that I do not like in my house. How about you bring it down? And this immediately turns into another argument back home. We really haven't seen any other single rooms of their house except for this living room where they just seem to be fighting 24 7 so after they pop off at each other for a while and both seem scorned by the conversation it turns into rule change day and the rule changes are she has to build a christian altar in the house somewhere that they keep up for the duration of her stay and she's gonna have the kids do bible study which actually this dude accepts because they kind of believe that even though they practice this stuff which is you know this cosplaying like they're vampires and cats etc they want their kids to feel open to you know discover whatever beliefs they want so he says in his own words, as long as it doesn't cross any lines, he's going to let it happen. So he's already kind of playing better than she did with the rules. But again, I get why they're both being so stern, because this is a part of humanity and our personality that is very hard to go against, especially if you believe in it as deeply as both of these people do. Oh, and also she says they have to go to the beach together, to which the kids have the most kid like response to. I want to play my video games. <laughs> That's right. Kid just wants to stay in, play Fortnite. Do I really blame him? No, but honestly, it might be a fun time at the beach. I'm sure it will. 
so that all the powers of evil are hereby bound, expelled, and barred from returning to this space. And I gotta give the kids props too. They're being pretty open-minded and kind of taking in this woman's beliefs, not judging her too much for it. You can tell they kind of are making little sly comments here and there, but ultimately, I'm proud of this family for trying to embrace something that is pretty much polar opposite of their day-to-day. -day. I'll give anybody props on this show if they just follow the damn rules, which seems to be getting more rare the more I watch it. Maybe I'll just draw a pentagram on the ground and, you know, ask Satan to end this right now. <laughs> I love this slow zoom out shot of him looking so dramatic down at the floor. And he's just like, she doesn't even know I could spawn a level 67 warlock right now. Yeah, with defense four stats. Oh, and he's got ancient gear on too. So he's going to be impossible to defeat. She's lucky I didn't spawn him in because I totally have the mana for it. <laughs> oh crap, I got to get back to my subreddit. People are probably posting spam. It's what? gonna look uglier than your face. Uh, Anthony, first of all, you will not speak to me that way. I'm a grown adult. So they're here at the beach. We're gonna skip forward and clearly uh, things are already popping off. They got here like five minutes ago and this kid's already calling his new mom ugly, which is just, that's crossing the line. I don't care if you think she's like a brainwashed sheeple, whatever. You don't like what she's bringing into your house. You don't call somebody ugly, especially when you're a little freaking kid, right? So thankfully the dad steps in and tells the kid to apologize. I'm sorry. For what? Okay. And it was kind of a bratty apology to be expected from the kid. I mean, he's 11. That is prime, like, annoying little shit age. You know what I mean? Where just everything they say starts to become sarcastic. He's mad he got pulled away from his Roblox for two hours to come to the beach. He's in a heightened emotional state, so she doesn't blame him for that. If anything, this wins some brownie points with the warlock dad as she sees, wow, he actually still disciplines the kids and shows them right from wrong, which I thought they were just going to be worshipping evil all the time. But so they spend the rest of the day, honestly, enjoying pizza on the beach, and this looks like a straight-up vibe. Like, I'm jealous of this right now. And as a result, when they get back, we see a very magical moment between these two, which is one of my favorite parts of this show. I love laughing at how different these families are, how hard of a time they have. But when people relate to each other like true humans, that is seriously such a beautiful moment to me. Maybe it's because I'm just straight up empathetic as hell. But that to me is the beauty of being a human is connecting with people. Anyways, that was a long preamble. Let's just see that moment play out. I didn't know my father until I was 18. You are doing a really good job with these kids. So they both kind of break down as this lady reveals that she was a product of divorce. So she only wanted to just have a perfect family, stay together with her husband and raise kids and have them, you know, have role models. And this guy opens up. His father was the same way. He didn't even know him until he was 18. And then shortly after, while his dad was on his way to see him, he got hit by another driver and passed away. And these two basically just connect, realizing that they are both human and all they want to do is do right by their family and by their kids. And even though they might have polar opposite beliefs, when it comes to who they pray to, that core thing still links them, and it still shows that they're both good people deep down, which is beautiful. But anyways, this doesn't have to be so sappy. Let's get back to the cringe, right? Well, I um, I definitely uh, feel like we're on a much more common ground of kind of understanding. And by the way, that was the last night they were together too. So if anything, this wrapped up so much nicer than I ever thought it would, especially looking at the intro. And then they sit down at the final table and I don't really need to show clips because it's basically the same process that we just saw over the past week, but at hyper fast speed. Like within this 30 minute conversation, the witch wife who was away with this other family, let me know if you want me to make a video on her side. She starts popping off saying, how dare you do this? How dare you do that? They both fight, but then they they both realize again they are deep down just parents that want to be very good for their families and give their kids a better life than they had growing up so if that isn't a beautiful ending to this episode i don't know what is let me know what you thought down in the comments below and i'll give you one more chance to like let's give it four seconds this time or else again this lady might show up at your doorstep trying to convince you there's a demon inside that needs to be taken out but as always thanks for watching till the very end of this video i'll catch you guys in the next one and until next time peace out